Welcome to Board Game Archaeologist, where we play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. I'm Rob. And today, we're looking at Mousetrap. Mousetrap, one of the three Rube, Bo Rube Goldberg games. There's Mousetrap, Crazy Clock, and Fishbait, and we have them all. Mousetrap was 1963, came from Ideal, company made it. Um, plastic greatness, and probably one of the most classic games out there, and one that I think every single person probably remembers. Yeah, the object of the game is to be the the last mouse standing. Yeah, and it comes with, of course, the mouse trap, the thing that we've seen, and it's never changed outside of the size of the ball. The ball has changed sizes throughout the years. Um, the rest of it, I think, is pretty tight. It comes with four mouse because you can play two to four players, but you could play alone too because it's really just building this thing up. Comes with very colorful instructions and. Thankfully, I have the 1963 version of the game, so I was, I'm really happy about that. It um, comes with an awesome board with 1960s pop, poppy graphics to it, and um, I love the color, love the plastic. Yeah, it, the way everyone starts is everyone rolls, highest roll goes first, and it's all about making it through this first part of the board until you get to that circle at the end, and it's all about building this and then capturing your friends in it. And that's what we didn't say, is most of the game is actually building the mousetrap. You don't start with the mousetrap built. You start with the pieces, and you follow the instructions. So every time somebody lands on a white space on the board, you'll do part one, which is, which is the base. It's exactly like a model kit. And I can tell you, that's one of the things I love about it, because modeling is my absolute favorite hobby. But it is. So the first 24 spaces you got to hit the white space 24 and not all of them some of them say don't take apart so then you're even burned on those ones yeah and so okay because essentially you have to hit those white spaces until the trap is built and then when everyone's stuck in that last circle whoever's in the cheese space and if someone else goes onto the turn crank space oh the mechanism will have a chance to play itself out now the rules emphasize that the person who owns the game should probably make sure that it like works first before they like get going with it. But the special rules also will state that, you know, if the trap, you know, doesn't do its thing, your mouse is free to go. Right. And to be honest, I don't want to be the homeowner that's responsible for mouse trap working 100% of the time. If you lock it down, and I'm actually working on a, a build up where it's all going to be locked down and kind of painted realistically and built up. Yeah, I think it should work, uh, you know, 98%, 99% of the time. Um, but when you're playing with this plastic game, especially if you were younger, good luck. And especially if you're building it with your friends, each individual where a person's begrudgingly fitting one piece onto the other, because... 24 white spaces is a lot of white spaces before a game can really be played. Right, and there's other colored spaces that have, like, go back to and cat got go back to start. So that kind of keeps you kind of busy. But once you get to this point, you're in a loop. So if you haven't built it, if you just accidentally made it all the way there without getting it built, you're just kind of going around and around and around until you build it and hope somebody lands in there and goes there. This is a game... To keep your kids busy. And for model builders, um, I loved it. I just thought it was fantastic. And I knew at some point in my life I would paint it and build it and lock it down. So let's give it a whirl. Yeah. I'm going to actually hold down part of it. So if you <laughs> want to spin the thing, go like that. And there's part over there that I feel will work better if I hold on to it. So. I'm going to hold this down. And it worked. But again, we're talking 59-year-old, <laughs> 26. So um, it did work. And I knew right away that there's a warpage to this, that in the first game, um, they don't have a lock thing in it right here on the thing. But in the newer ones, they do. Yeah. And that's really like the pros that I think that, you know, because most of the game by design is building the thing, I think that they really intended that for that to be, you know, the experience of it. So I feel like it's just like for, for the people who are less mechanically minded like that, 
it, it, it's a very tedious experience, but to like actually get it to function and work is pretty difficult. This one's better than the next one we have coming up. I love Rube Goldberg, and I'm really, I'm really into these games, and that's why I have all three of them. I've always thought the mechanics to the whole thing is good. I didn't grow up on Mousetrap. I grew up on Crazy Clock, which will be coming up soon. Um, exact same thing, except you're waking a guy up out of bed. That game, I don't think, is almost possible to make it work all the way through without a little push here and there. Yeah, and especially not with child engineering. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you want to know more about us, check us out at toyarchaeology.com. More importantly, find us on Facebook in our group. We're much more active in there. It's been summertime, so we're a little quiet. But it's great to see a 1963 classic game, all plastic, uh, ready to play in the summertime. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.